Hello, my beautiful Capricorn friends, and welcome to your horoscope for February 2020, where the hot ticket item this month is that Mercury is going retrograde. Now, it has already been a busy time in the life of the Capricorn. You guys have had a lot going on. It's been a busy couple years. The growth, the development, the responsibility, the leveling up, it's all been there. So the nice part about this month is that it is a continuation of those things. And some of those lessons, you've learned them, you, you've you had them. Some of them are starting to become a part of your DNA of coming to the next level. So some of these big moving energies that are here are not entirely surprising to you this month. So I think it's interesting to get to watch some of the personal planets, a retrograde of Mercury, Mars coming down into your sign, give you a little umph and a little bit of a change of pace from what maybe has been going on, okay? All right, right at the beginning of the month as we come in here, February 3rd, we see Mercury, our planet of communications, decision-making, thinking, studying, siblings, moving into the energy of Pisces. So this is going to begin to create busyness in your third house. So if you watch the month, your first house and your third houses become the houses of power this month, okay? Now Mercury, because he's our communication planet, he wants facts, he wants details, he wants all of the information, and he really does kind of want it now. But when he moves into the energy of Pisces, Pisces is not an energy that is always so factual. Instead, you feel more than you fact, right? Information be can, can be vague. It can be moving in between the worlds a little bit. So this is a place where we say that Mercury is in fall because he's not completely comfortable over there. However, uncomfortable doesn't mean not useful. It just means he's not at his full normal capacity. So here in the third house with Mercury here, communications, thinking. It's the third house. Maybe you're studying spiritual things. Maybe you are studying um, something about listening, right? Because Pisces is a phenomenally um, empathetic, good listener. So you could be listening and taking notes. So studying could be happening here. Poetry, writing a book, um, talking to siblings, interacting with um, neighbors, something like this, but it's really nice, it's really peaceful. And what you don't have is the gift of solid logic right behind you because Mercury is not strong right now. So what you're gonna wanna do with this timing of Mercury being in Pisces is to trust your intuition, Capricorn, right? I am sure that in this last six months, you have seen some things walk into your life that seem like they came from someplace in between the worlds or someplace where it's like, well, where is this coming from? And now you're seeing the value of it. It's useful. It's implanted in your life. And you maybe are having some conversations, doing some planning, some strategy or something around that, but you're having to trust your intuition, not just solid logic, because sometimes the magic that walks into our life is really not very logical. It's so much more spiritual. February 7th, we've got Venus moving on, getting out of your third house, and she's going to move over here into your fourth house, into the energy of Aries. Now, Venus is another planet who's not completely comfortable in the sign that she's in right now because Venus wants everybody to win. She wants fairness, diplomacy, where it's about all of us, right? And Aries is like, it is about me. <laughs> so these, this is an energy that is not exactly comfortable for Venus. However, what Venus in Aries is, is love and money and harmony on fire, right? So this is a wonderful energy in your fourth house, home, family, real estate, property, anything to do with women in your life or your emotional security, where Venus's power in Aries may be that you need to ask for what you need. You've got Mercury over here. Maybe you need to listen to what is needed from you at home or in some kind of situation. Because this is so much of the mind and this also has a psychological feature, maybe you're having to give yourself some grace, forgive yourself, right? Make different plans and be gentle with yourself this month. That could definitely be something that's on the table, but Venus is not afraid to tell you, I need this here. Now, the other thing I think of is just, she's Venus, so Venus can bring relationships into your house or she can bring um, some harmony to the relationships in your house and things like that. So that could be very good. What I don't think that Venus does for you here is bring you a fair amount of issues unless you take Venus really far to that Aries um, 
Mars energetic place and you actually have conflict because Venus can be very impulsive in the energy of Aries. So maybe you make a decision in your home or in an interaction in your home and you haven't really thought it through. So you make an impulsive decision and it does cause a challenge. But even so, I think Venus would try and backtrack that and bring some harmony to the table, okay? On the 9th, we're going to have a full moon happening, and the full moon's going to happen in the energy of Leo, which lights up your 8th house space, okay? A full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. We need to create a shift happening here in this particular energy. Now, the 8th house, it's the beginning of the year. I think of taxes, insurance, because the 8th house is the house of joint resources, right? So you're tightly connected to some other resource. And where do we get more tightly connected than spiritually, sexually, and financially, right? So up here, if it's any one of those things, you have a joint connection to something. But just thinking practically, timing is the beginning of the year. You could be taxes, health insurance, any of those kind of entities. If, you've, if it's time to re-up on student um, loans or financial aid or you're refinancing the house or something like that, this moon is going to help you to get those things done. Now, in the energy of Leo, it's big, it's bold, it's brave, it's expressive here, and it's very, very original. So this is the other reason that I kind of think about this, this full moon happening up here, um, where maybe you're even just tackling fear. Right? This sheds a whole bunch of light on this 8th house area. And sometimes I think the most magical things that we do is, is go to the thing that we're most afraid of. And that's the thing that we're actually built to do. It can be that you're going back to a trauma or something else that has produced fear. But sometimes just being who we genuinely are is one of the scariest things that we do. But it's so beautiful. You've got a lot of expression happening here. You've got a lot of saying what's right for you or what's right in your house or what you need. And then you step into this moon energy that wants to express. So you could certainly be expressing something up there. I wouldn't be surprised if you decided to study astrology or do something like that, okay? On the 16th, favorite day of the month, I'm not going to lie. Mars, our action, energy, movement, assertion, let's get things done kind of energy moves into the energy of Capricorn, right? He comes right here home into your sign and you guys like each other. Mars wants to do stuff and he's boots on the ground. He wants to have energy going and be in motion. Capricorn energy wants to use its resources and achieve and be effective and efficient. So Capricorn gives that Mars energy a channeling for all of the energy so you can do things that are productive. One of the things that I think is, first of all, it's here in your first house. So you may be a busy beetle this month. You may be having to take a lot of action or you're doing things where you're very, very busy because a lot of energy has come to your table. You've taken on many new responsibilities, but maybe now those responsibilities require you to take action in them in some way. But Mars is going to help you. This is a boost of delicious energy. One thing I do try and remind um, Earth signs is that Mars in your first house can be so much energy. So as an earth energy, just make sure you're getting it out of your body. Capricorns are usually pretty good about that, but make sure if there's excess energy, you do expel it. So take a walk, whatever you do, that's very physical. The other thing I think that this helps you with, right, is it'll ask you, Capricorn, are you in charge of your life? Or is your life in charge of you? Which one of you is running the show? Because maybe you need a little bit of a course correction here. You need to do things. You need this energy of Mars to say, oh, I need to go file my taxes, right? Oh, I need to do these rearrangements at home in the home zone, right? Whatever it is, Mars is going to get you going in the direction you need to to be efficient and effective. February 17th, we see beautiful Mercury who's moved here into the energy of Pisces coming into its retrograde. Now, Mercury is going to retrograde, beginning its retrograde in the energy at 12 degrees of Pisces. It's going to end its retrograde at 28 degrees of Aquarius, March 10th. While it's here at this portion of the retrograde, it's in the third house. So you're going to be going back over thinking, <clears throat> studying, documentation, Anything legal could also be that you're having to go back to that as well. Communications, maybe you're looking through paperwork to sign to file your taxes, right? There are some very practical things that are going on here. But I do think that this is a great energy if you are a writer or if you do something like that or you're studying. It's like you get to go back over the information, make sure you have it absorbed. 
so that you can adjust what you need to adjust, re-edit, reconnect, revise, any of those things that you need to to move it forward. Now, during a retrograde, we go back, we re, we reconnect, revise, re-edit, um, reunion. Sometimes people come back into our lives. In the third house, Mercury, because it's over all of the communication things, sometimes we can see issues, especially in the third house, with our computers, cell phones, cars, smartwatches, your Fitbit, where you're just like, I don't get it. How come I've tried to make this phone call 700 times and it's just not going through? Be patient, right? I tell you guys with every Mercury retrograde specifically, everybody is facing forward, but our heads and our thinking and our logic has already been quieted and now it's retrograde, so it's pointing backwards. If everybody's pointing backwards but walking forward, we're likely going to bonk into each other. So have a lot of grace with each other while you're traveling around out there. But celebrate this retrograde. Whatever's coming back needs your attention. Not to mention, as soon as we get to the 20th, this becomes even more useful in your placement. First, though, on the 19th, we've got the sun bringing light, heat, life, vitality and energy and motivation more than anything to this third house so truly whatever's happening in your retrograde whatever let's say you were trying to write something and you felt like you had writer's block now it's coming through you're pulling ideas from the past and they're showing up on this paper you weren't getting it in this class you felt like you weren't absorbing it you go back over it and now the sun has got you motivated to really absorb this paperwork that needs to be done, studying, getting that website together, whatever it is, the sun has brought a motivation to be in motion and get this area active and moving, okay? Now on the 20th, I told you I was really excited about that day. What we've got is Jupiter, who's here in your first house, is going to come into a sextile with Neptune, who's over here in your third house. Now you also have the benefit of some Mercury Sun energy over here as well. But when the planets have sex, that's good for us because it's a pocket of opportunity that's not only useful and opportune, but you're taking action on it. You're taking intelligent, useful action on it. So what we know about this placement is this is a placement and an aspect where if you trust your intuition, you will progress forward faster than you have at any other time. It's literally like you need this energy to be so quiet and empathetically listen and listen between the worlds, trust your dreams, your visions, your intuitions, so that you can pull it forward into something useful informing your new structures of what you've got going forward and to expand you out. The other thing that this is entirely useful for, when Jupiter and Neptune interact in a sextile, they're asking you to redefine or get clarity about your ideals. What are your ideals? What do you want to be known for? What is your image about? What message are you carrying? Right? What are your ideals? Capricorn, because if you don't know what your ideals are, if you don't know what you stand for, this is an election year. What is your honest to God position, right? What do you know about what's happening in the world around you? Do you want to know about those things? What do you stand for? If you don't know your ideals, how can you know if you're growing into them? How can you know if you're really taking advantage of this delicious leveling up energy if you don't know what you're working towards and growing towards, right? So it's a wonderful time to reset your ideals here and some of this could be too you know in a very um, material external way right like what is your ideal external circumstance for your life right where do you want to live what car do you want to drive what do some of these things look like as your ideal paint the picture so that you can trust the visions of what's coming to you to show you the path you should be on okay on the 23rd, as we end this month, we've got a beautiful new moon happening down here in all of this gorgeous energy. Now, the aspect that happens when we have a new moon is the sun and the moon are together. They're in conjunction. So when our luminaries come together, absolutely anything is possible. That's why we love it. Now, the new moon is the darkest, calmest, quietest part of the moon cycle. So you're planting these seeds of intention to have new beginning, fresh start, fresh perspective, new life come into this area, but you do it in the dark so you don't actually know how it's going to blossom. But what we do know is that in your thinking, 
and your speaking and your ideals in the way that you communicate things out, whatever that may be, you are asking, you are praying, you are meditating, you are pulling in something that's maybe intangible that later you turn into something into a very material place. And that can be just as much as getting your thinking on track, getting your studies on track. It can be any of those things. And this can also be an indicator to you too that maybe in this third house area, thinking, communication, studying, maybe you need some solitary time to be able to do that. In your ideals of your life, is there time to schedule a 30 minute study astrology session so that you can absorb this information? Is there a 30 minute writing session so that you can get that book, that website, those ideas down on paper, right? Whatever it is, this new moon is coming to help you see um, where you can have this fresh start in this particular area. And it's going to pull it out of a place that comes from a place that is intangible and then shows itself here. It's the place you feel, but you can't necessarily touch. So I love this energy for you this month because I think it's important for you Capricorns to also just jump into the spiritual awakenings and jump into the spiritual realm and have time that is not so logical so that you can see what else is under that big old earth energy that you're carrying around and supporting us all on, okay? All right, Capricorn, I think it's going to be a good month. I think it's going to be a month that is probably one of the quietest that we have this year. So enjoy it. Enjoy your retrograde. Please be graceful with other people. We're going to make mistakes, I promise. And thank you for having grace with me as I'm learning my new setup and my new house, lights, all of this stuff. I'm figuring it out. So thank you for being graceful with me as well. I look forward to perfecting it and seeing you next month for our next uh, heavenly forecast of what we've got going on. I love you guys. Bye.